Welcome to the program, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Okay, we've got a lot to cover here, and I just want to talk a little bit more about Ron DeSantis' latest shoes. Now, I did a YouTube short a few weeks ago, and in that YouTube short, you guys can find this on my YouTube channel, Brian Craig Show on YouTube. I did a YouTube short a few weeks ago, and I asked Alexa, watch, is going to turn our device on now, I asked Alexa, how tall is Ron DeSantis? This was a few weeks ago. And Alexa said five foot six. Okay, now she's in the background talking. So I did this a few weeks ago. You can go see the YouTube short. I'm glad I did this because it documented it. It was a few weeks ago. And Alexa said that he is five feet, six inches tall. Today, Alexa says that Ron DeSantis, just a couple weeks later, is five feet, 11 inches tall. So Ron DeSantis has grown five inches amazing. in just the last few weeks. And, you know, the thing about Ron DeSantis and the height, the, I know a lot of people think it's a petty thing to bring up. It's not that, he, it's not that he's five, six, okay? It's that he goes to such great lengths to deceive us about right. his height. Yeah. He stopped wearing the cowboy boots the other day. And what he's wearing now are these oil-resistant um, mechanics boots. They look like what um, Herman Munster wears. Yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> so, sometimes in movies— I don't know what he's thinking. Sometimes in movies and television shows, actors wear these kinds of shoes. You don't see their feet to make them taller with the other actors. Yeah, and remember you don't there was a shot of Robert De Niro on set? Oh, yes. And I he was wearing that. shoes that had like a three- or four-inch sole. They're like clogs or something. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah, so, so I mean, strange. Yeah. It's the so Tom strange. Cruise collection. And, you know, it, it's just so bizarre— that he there's goes to such wrong with, about it. There's nothing wrong to me for an actor to do that because um, the, the character, you know, if you have an actor that's short, um, on the short side, that's a man, and, you know, they want the actor to look, t they're playing a part. It's it's fiction. Yeah. It's not real life, and, and deception is part of- It's pretend. The movie fantasy. It's pretend. Exactly, it's, it's pretend. pretend. It's no big deal. But with DeSantis, it's just like an overt- lie that um you know he just keeps like you said working so hard to perpetuate for some reason it's really this, i just can't help but thinking jeb bush is behind this whole yeah thing. the deception is is awful and and i every time we talk about it i, I make a big point it's not i'm not tall i'm only five seven and you know what my i have uh a curved spine that curves more and more as i get older yeah so i don't even i haven't measured myself in a long time i probably shrunk because my spine is curved so much right. over the years it's not that he's not tall as other people that are running for president. It's that he goes to such great lengths right. to deceive the American people about his height. And it's, it's, it's really comical. And, you know, these late, time, uh, these late night comics and all these people in, in, in Saturday Night Live and all this stuff, they're so political they can't be funny. This is no. made for jokes and parody. Yeah. The thing with the, with the shoes. And, but anyway, if you catch Ron DeSantis lately, you know, this Republican debate on News Nation or anywhere else in the last week, check out his new shoes, the oil-resistant mm. mechanic boots, which ca the cowboy boots were a good ploy because I know a lot of people outside of Florida don't realize this. They think Florida is all beaches and Disney World. Florida is a very southern state, and a lot of native Floridians in Florida wear cowboy boots. It is not unusual for professionals, businessmen, judges, lawyers, and doctors to wear cowboy boots with their suits. That's very common in Florida. And he was getting away with it for a while, and then you know, he blew it. The thing it. is, I don't know why he had to be so much taller. If he wanted to wear shoes that had like a two-inch heel, like a cowboy boot typically does, and make himself 5'8", why is that not okay? I mean, why, why, why does he have to be close to six feet tall? Mm -hmm. Um. And and I don't understand that. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, it's just, just it's just, it's just who, who goes around thinking I'm going to add four inches to my mm -hmm. height? That's a lot of height. Yeah, it's it's insane. Now, uh, a, a little add on to this Vivek Ramaswamy business. Vivek, I talked, I did an entire show today, so I'm not going to go yeah. through the whole thing on how well he did during the debate last night. Okay, that debate was spectacular. I mean, he just destroyed. DeSantis, Nikki Haley, and Chris Christie. He's very Christie. good at that stuff. I think yeah. he's working with Trump. Well, I don't— I know you said things about him with 
the Soros connection, and I understand that, but I, I feel like he, he's helping Trump and he's going to have a place in the Trump administration. Well, I don't, I don't think he's going to be the vice president. President Trump said a few weeks ago after the – it was either the first or second one of these loser debates. Right? It was the first or second Republican debate. He, uh, president Trump said there's nobody on that stage that's going to be vice president. Okay, He, he said that. He said it more yeah, than once. Be Christy Nome. It probably, but he said it more than once. Uh, actually, a short list of who President Trump is considering has leaked out. And after the first break, I want to go through the short list that leaked out from the Trump campaign. And this leaked out uh, not on accident. I think it leaked out so that people like us would talk about it, so that President Trump and his campaign can get kind of a feel for who's liked and who's not. Right. You know, they're 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 floating the names out there. So after the first break, I want to go through that list. Now I want to talk about this business with. Kevin McCarthy resigning, though. Kevin McCarthy is leaving Congress at the end of the month. And by my count, with Santos gone and McCarthy leaving, that only gives the Republicans a two-seat majority in the House of Representatives. And I truly believe that Kevin McCarthy is scheming here. You know, people don't leave Congress. There's too much money to be made. And as crazy as this sounds, he's still got a lot of pool in there. He's the one that got rid of Santos last week, right? My, uh, Mike Johnson wanted to keep Santos, and McCarthy came in and pulled some stun and got rid of Santos last week. So he's still got a lot of pool. I think, I really do, I think he is so angry that they took the speakership away from him that he is trying to give control back to the Democrats. We're, we're you know, when they do these votes, it's rare for everyone to show up. Now, if we lose, if, if a couple Republicans are sick, if someone's in the hospital mm-hmm. or something like this, we, we'll lose a vote, right? I mean, we don't have a big enough majority. And it, I think he's trying to hand things over to the Democrats. And, you know, there's a lot of- Well, let, he's, he, yeah, I mean, he definitely is behind well, what, this. Kathy, we're just, a, we, we lose a couple more people in the House and the Democrats will elect a new speaker. Do you understand? Who have we gotten rid of? Uh, so, uh, Santos. Santos and who else? And, well, and McCarthy's leaving. So that right, gives us a two-seat true. majority. We have a very slim yeah. majority. Right now there's a three-seat majority. So I, I think Kevin McCarthy is working to hand things over to the Dems. You know, another thing about it too is a lot of legislation comes up and a lot of Republicans are traitors and will vote with the Democrats. And mm-hmm. – so a lot of the Democrats are going to get a lot of legislation through. They control the Senate. They're going to get a lot of legislation through the House with some of these traitor Republicans. Kevin McCarthy's scheme, and he, did, he is not leaving. Okay, he is not leaving uh, for a good reason. No. And it's, he's not leaving for some big fancy job making millions of dollars. He would get that anyway. He's, he is up. To, one one thing about Kevin McCarthy that we've learned in the last few weeks is he is a very nasty, he is a very vindictive and very calculating person, and everything he does is very deliberate. Uh, th- I know this seems kind of like an emotional thing, and Matt Gates was saying uh, yesterday on his show, which is really good, his uh, Matt Gates' podcast, mm-hmm. he was saying that he can't handle not being in charge. Right. And that's why. And and on the face of it, I know it seems that way, but no, he's he's scheming in some other ways. And he is a very, very, very bad man. Kevin McCarthy. He really is. And and he's got a lot of allies in the House still, you know, so that I I don't I, I don't know exactly what his scheme is. It's a lot to do with the things I just mentioned, but he is up to something, I promise you. And and we have not heard the last of this of this snake. Now, the House did vote to censure uh, Bowman for pulling the fire alarm. So today with Bowman, right, they voted to censure and a little slap on was pulling the fire alarm. Uh, there were 434 House members present, okay? There's 435 members of the House. So somebody wasn't there, and they all didn't vote, okay? Let me go through. This is what I'm talking about with this slim majority with Kevin McCarthy leaving and we only have a two seat majority. Okay. In the, um, censure of, of Bowman today, 214 voted yay. 191 voted nay. Five voted present and 24 were there, but didn't vote. Okay. So you understand what I mean? So rarely when a bill comes up, 
do you get everyone there and do you get everyone voting? Having this many people there is unusual, Mm -hmm. but 29 people didn't vote. You understand what I mean? So the the majority is so slim, that is not good. And we've got a year until the the next uh, the next election, and that's a long time. And they can get a lot um, a lot of terrible things done, like continuing to fund and support this illegal proxy war oh, yeah. in Ukraine. But so Jamal Bowman, so they they voted to censure him and gave him a thousand dollar fine. And I heard him talking. He was he's an arrogant guy. And he said, oh, I was in a hurry, and the door I usually go through was locked, and I didn't realize it was fine. You know, he's a high school principal, or, high, or I'm not sure if it was high school, but he's a, he was a school principal. Right. Ninety percent of what school principals do are fire drills. Right. And maintaining the fire alarms and all that stuff. There's no one in the House of Representatives that knows how to use fire alarms better than Bowman, because he's, he's done it his whole teaching education career. So in the face of it, it's just stupid. And, you know, this, this double – what he did was a crime. They were voting. He didn't like it, so he pulled the alarm to stop it. He, was, he couldn't – you know, he wasn't going to get his way in a vote, so he pulled the alarm to try to stop it. It's, it's like, uh, you know, if you, if you were a student and you did that at a school, you'd get arrested. Right. And I, I remember more than once when I was in high school and middle school, we had false fire alarms, and the police came, and they investigated, and they arrested kids – who had pulled uh, fire alarms. Kids that pulled fire alarms got, uh, get expelled from school. They get arrested. And, you know, it's, it, you, you pull a fire alarm, you know, that whole thing about you can't, cry, you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. Well, you can yell fire in a crowded theater if there's a fire in the theater, mm-hmm. okay? But if you do it and there's no fire, you've committed a crime. And what happens after that, like if people get hurt, you know, it enhances the crime. What he did is a crime that anyone else would have gotten arrested and gone to jail for. Yeah. If, if a Republican did it, they would have been out. If a tourist did it or a staffer, they would have been arrested. And the, there's, a, there's a, a big double standard that goes on. For some reason, Democrats just have immunity. To, they're like James Bond. They got a license to do whatever crime they want to do. Well, and they they protect each other for the most part. But we're in charge. I know. Well, see, this is what I'm talking about with the slim majority. See, yeah. if we had a real large majority, like a 30 seat majority or something big, he he'd be out. Yeah, he'd be out just like Santos. Santos would be in and he'd be out. You know, but we have such a small majority. We you, you know you we don't have the votes to do it. And right. a lot there's a lot of people that are Republicans that are liberal or they're in liberal districts, and if they take a stand against a minority, even though they've done a crime, they're afraid of what people in their district will say, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You guys know how all that goes. And I'm so sick of this double standard, and that's that's one of the things with you know, President Trump. He holds everybody the same standard. There's none of this double standard business, and uh, that's, that's one of the things they don't, they don't like about him. But it, it, it's really sickening to me with the uh, – you know, 29 of them didn't vote in, in the House. I, I don't have a breakdown on who didn't vote, so I don't know who didn't vote. But these guys make a lot of money. They're in Congress. They got all their families with these fake jobs like the Bidens, and then they don't vote. The reason they don't vote, they vote present or, or envy, not, no, not voting, is so they don't have to take a position. Right. You know, they're so safe. They're so afraid. It, it's – there's nothing sleazier – than the than the Congress of the United States, they are the the only thing that comes close is the fake news media. Yeah, they are sleazy, slimy. That's this is why Joe Biden doesn't care about his low approval. There's a new CNN poll today that Biden has another all time low. Low, and he, they just had a poll a couple of days ago all time. He broke that. He's got another all time low. Biden spent his whole career in the Congress. He they always have low approval ratings, and he spent 50 years there, so he doesn't care. No. He does not about care at approval all. ratings. No, not at all. He, he could have a zero, and they're he stuck care. with him. Yeah, they're stuck with him. He doesn't he's, he's care. He's not going to drop out. He's no. not going to leave. He's the, yeah. He he doesn't care. No, not one bit. No, and you look at the way he behaves. He was talking about some little girl and her hair, and 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 a and a, and a training bra at a speech yesterday. A and, training bra. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. Oh my goodness gracious! 
I, I couldn't believe it. And it's, you know what? It's not even in the news, Harley. A little mention, then they laugh. Ha, 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 ha. You know, he's got dementia. Ha, ha, ha. But, but it's you not know, funny. behind the scenes, they're rolling their eyes. They're like, oh, my gosh. You know what I mean? But they're never going to say that on camera. When, when you see how bad Biden is on television, you got to wonder how sleazy is he behind closed doors, right? I mean, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it must be pretty it's bad. It's crazy. Now, listen. My pillow, Mike Lindell at My Pillow has personally authorized with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, free shipping on all my pillow products. I told you guys the other day, I called Mike Lindell's office on Monday. I, Kathy and I were in the living room. We we're sitting on the couch. I called Mike Lindell's office on Monday yep. and said, hey, uh, you think we could get free shipping on everything? And, and his assistant, she said, let me check. Less than a minute later, she talked to Mike. She said, yep. You've got uh, free shipping, but only until December 15th. This is for Christmas. So with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, free shipping on all my pillow products, no matter how big or small, free shipping on all my pillow products with our promo code Kane at checkout. And by the way, that's on top of whatever discount there is with the, pro, uh, the promo code Kane, which is good because uh, we're buying a new bed for our daughter. She mm-hmm. needs a mattress. We, it, my pillow has all kinds of mattresses, foam mattresses, uh, spring, all the all the different kinds of mattresses. We just don't talk about them too much. They have all of them. So uh, that's free shipping on a mattress. Is a, that's a, that's a big savings right there on top of the discount already. Absolutely. So do your Christmas shopping at mypillow.com. Take advantage of all the specials. And until December 15th, free shipping when you use our promo code Kane at checkout. K-A-N-E. We're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, I'm going to go through this short list that leaked out of the Trump campaign of possible vice presidential picks, all right? We'll get into that right after this. It's the most wonderful time of the year, Christmas time, and the Christmas countdown has officially begun. Are you ready for the festivities? Find everything you're looking for at sarinstore.com. That's S-E-R-A-N, sarinstore.com. Have everything you're looking for. Christmas decorations, Christmas gifts, Christmas trees, Christmas clothes, Christmas costumes, Christmas pet clothes, Christmas baby products, and that's just the beginning. sarinstore.com will ensure that your holiday experience is truly special and unforgettable. Make this Christmas the one to remember, visit sarinstore.com and let the holiday magic begin. sarinstore.com, S E R A N, sarinstore.com, your one stop destination for everything Christmas. Add a splash of color to your life with the Etsy shop, Popular Coloring Art. Popular Coloring Art on Etsy have a huge selection of coloring pages and wall art, and everything is available for digital download. Whether you're a kid or adult, their high-quality artwork is designed to bring out the artist in you. Popular Coloring Art on Etsy have beautiful wall art for the holidays featuring Santa and Mrs. Claus. But that's not all. They also have coloring pages for Christmas, pet lovers, vintage cars, fairies, cat lovers, dog lovers, birds, birds, nature enthusiasts, travel buffs, and so much more. Discover unique coloring pages that will ignite your artistic creativity, no matter how young or old. Popular Coloring Art on Etsy. Online at popularcoloringart.etsy.com. That's popularcoloringart.etsy.com. High quality and unique coloring pages for kids and adults. Go to the shop right now. Explore the collection. You will be impressed. popularcoloringart.etsy.com. Um... From author Stephanie Tayo comes a book that takes place in Cornwall, Ontario, where it seems that dreams can come true and life feels uncomplicated. But one young woman's world is about to be forever transformed. Love Beyond Age, available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and other online booksellers. In Love Beyond Age, meet Quinn. She's a determined soul with aspirations of becoming a psychologist. She shares a simple life with her dad, saving every penny for her dreams. But life has a way of throwing unexpected curveballs. Everything changes when she crosses paths with James, whose presence by the river ignites a connection neither can deny. As their university journeys begin, Quinn finds herself torn between her deepening connection with the mysterious James and her growing feelings for her competitive friend Jasper. Secrets are unveiled, revelations come to light, and Quinn discovers a shocking truth about James' hidden secret. As danger lurks on the horizon, relationships are put to the test, and 
old emotions resurface. A love triangle takes hold, pushing Quinn to the brink. She faces a choice that will shape her future and define her path. Love Beyond Age from author Stephanie Tayo is a story of love, secrets, and choices that will tug at your heartstrings. Available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kobo, Apple Books, and other online booksellers. Order your copy right now and be transported to a world where romance is intertwined with the complexities of life. Love Beyond Age from author Stephanie Tayo. Order your copy right now. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Just another scam alert going on on the phones, by the way. You know, you get calls that are scams all the time. And I got one today. Uh, it was about a survey. And this one was about a YouTube survey. Uh, oh. And they sent me an email, and it was such a scan. It's one of those emails with a link that you don't press, or yeah, no, do they no, get no. all your data? Don't ever yeah. do that. Yeah, so watch out. You know, another scan I don't ever on. do those kind of surveys or anything like that. You know, it's, it's amazing to me about email. Um, the um, By the way, if you ever want to contact us, if you're interested in advertising on the program— you can email us at briancraigshow.com. Okay, there's a, uh, a link to email us there at briancraigshow.com. If you have a business or, or something you would like to promote, uh, it doesn't have to be a business. It could be a product, a book, something you want to sell, promote a website. You could have a business. Uh, you can email us there. Just go to briancraigshow.com. There's an email link. Um, but most email, is, it's, it's, like, it's worse than the regular mail. It's mostly junk. I mean, I rarely use email at all anymore. I don't think many people use email. Do you guys out there use email too much? Most people just text. Yeah, email's yeah. kind of gone out, hasn't it? Well, yeah, but we do get emails. No, you can email us at, uh, yeah. through the website, briancraigshow.com. Yeah. But uh, very little with the emails. And if there's an email with a link, forget about it. I would never touch a link. I actually get email. a lot of emails. So if I don't answer you back, don't take it personally, but I read them all. I'm just not you know, I'm still recovering from being out of the hospital. So yeah, <laughs> I just maybe can't answer behind. everybody. Yeah, well, we're trying. We'll get, we'll get through it all. So anyway, there's a, this scam out there, the survey scam is what I would call it. And I've, and I've gotten a couple things about different types of surveys, mm. and they look really legit. So you got you to be careful. I'll tell you another one that's going around too are Zoom links. Yes. Zoom links, that's a big one too. Okay, so uh, Axios uh, is, is, actually had a story here of this leak of the people that President Trump is considering – as a running mate. So I go through, this is, uh, the Gateway Pundit has an article on this. I'll go through it. Uh, Axios published an extensive piece detailing the potential makeup of a Trump cabinet in a second term. Uh, Trump and his team's primary focus is ensuring all positions in the government will be filled with people loyal to the America First agenda and Trump. That's so important and that's so hard. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing about it, a lot of people say, okay, and they go through a list. This person betrayed Trump. This person betrayed Trump. When you're not a government person or a politician your whole life and you go to be president of the United States, do you have to fill literally thousands of jobs? It's not an exaggeration. Many oh, yeah. thousands of jobs. Hundreds of those jobs are key. Dozens of them are immediate to you. But, you know, you've got to – like, for example, uh, who do you hire to be in charge of the department of whatever? I mean – you know, you've got to find people. And when you're somebody who's not in the government, you know, it's hard to fill. You know, people that get in those positions have been in the government for a long, long time. Yeah. They know a lot of people well, that work in the government. And they that's think, right. Oh, I know this guy. I met this kid. And they're all and friends. That, but Trump came in and, yeah, didn't really didn't know anybody. didn't have friends in that circle. Well, that's why there were a lot of leakers and traitors. Yeah. You know. And you, you've got to have people that know what they're doing or you won't be able to get anything done. Like if you just appoint somebody to be secretary of an agency, how are you going to get something done with that agency if they don't know what they're doing there? You, get, you understand what I mean? You just can't. Right. You can't hire um, MAGA media influencers like me or people like me. You like, I don't know what Betsy DeVos and, even did. Uh, well, that's a know nothing job. Well, secretary I mean, of education. Yeah. That's a, why that's even, a why did he even have that? I mean, well, well, but if you get a job and you're you're put in that position, wouldn't you do something positive? Well, like, I don't know what she did. Like what I mean is though, if if you just hire people that are loyal, like conservative media influencers, like me or Benny Johnson right. or something, and you say, okay, 
Benny Johnson, Brian Gray, you're going to head up the Department of Energy. <laughs> what would we do there? We'd, we'd show up and we would know what to do. Right. You know, you know what I mean? Uh, you, you know, so it's, it's, it's almost impossible for someone like President Trump to, to find people to run these different government jobs and positions and agencies that are loyal to him because people that are loyal to Trump don't have not spent their life in government. Right. And you got to have people there that know what they're doing. The gate. Uh, okay. goes back, back to the gateway pundit. Trump's first term, of course, had disloyal rhinos and globalists, you know, like Bolton right. and, and, and Barr and those guys. Ox, uh, Axios reveals that Trump openly speaks to friends about several possibilities for a running mate. The key consideration outlined by Trump and his closest confidants is agreeing uh, that Mike Pence, you know, they don't, they don't want another Judas. Well, right? obviously. They got to have someone that's, that's loyal. Axio says there are four individuals under the most serious discussion by Trump and his most trusted advisors. The first one on the list is J.D. Vance, the senator from Ohio. Mm. Um, Axio says that he might rather stay in the Senate. Right. You know, and J.D. Vance, I don't know too much about him other than he's from the tech industry, and that makes me nervous. He spent a lot of time in that Silicon Valley area. So I, I, I don't have a lot of confidence in J.D. Vance, right. although the, the little I've seen him since he's been in the Senate, he seems all right. So that's the first. Number two is Sarah Huckabee Sanders. She's the governor of Arkansas now and, of course, was the White House press secretary. I, I, everyone likes her. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 out of this list so far, because I've not gone through this whole list, okay? It's a short list. But out of the, between her and J.D. Vance, I would say Huckabee would be the better one of those two. I agree. Um, number three on the list is Carrie Lake. That's not going to happen. No. And the reason that's not going to happen is because she's not the governor of Arizona. If she was the, you know, if she, right. if she was the governor, it would be different. But they, they, there's, uh, there's bad narratives with that. The next one, I think, is the most likely. But, you know, with, with the most likely, when it gets down to it, the most likely don't really get it that often. That's Christy Nome, yeah. the, uh, the governor of South Dakota. That would be my pick. Yeah, I like her. Uh, the next one Axios mentioned is Byron Donalds, um, and they say he wants it. Um, Byron Donalds is uh, a congressman from Florida, and you can't have them both from the same state. They can't. There's got to be a way around that. Um, there is, but they wouldn't let Trump you do it. You don't know that. They you would don't never know that. let Trump do you it. You don't know that. You're assuming that. They, if you if you have the uh, both from the same state, they can't get the electoral votes of that state, and Florida's huge, okay? This isn't like Wyoming with yeah. one electoral vote or something. Where no, I know. Land. The way it worked before, Bush and Cheney were both from Texas. And when they decided it was going to be Cheney, Cheney went to Wyoming and got a driver's license because he had a house there. And, they, oh, we're in different states. They were establishment. There's no way they would let Trump get a driver's license in New York or New Jersey or something right. and say, oh, okay, he's a resident of New Jersey. Now President Trump can have Byron. To, I just don't think they'd let him do it. I think they would. I think that, that the Uniparty would take Trump and Byron Donalds to court mm -hmm. and uh, find it, – it, it'd be a mess. Next on the list – is Marjorie Taylor Greene. Mm. Now, that's a good choice, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. And she's very popular. She's from Georgia, which is important. We want Georgia. I don't know how popular she is in Georgia outside of her district. I don't know if she would do it. She's got a lifetime job right yeah. now. I got a lifetime she, job. I, I, I don't know if that would be a smart move for her. She'd have to run for vice president and Congress at the same time. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'd, I'd, I would like that, though. I would like her. I like Christy Noem better. I, yeah. But it's very unusual for somebody in the House to run for office like that, for, for vice. It's very unusual. Axio says that Melania has been pushing President Trump to pick Tucker Carlson. That's not going to happen. I don't believe that part. That's not going to happen. I don't believe that part. No. I, and I, I don't even think. I and, can't imagine. I could be wrong, but I, I can't imagine Tucker doing. That's a major shift for him. I, I just can't see him. I could be wrong. People have mentioned it, but I, I, I don't know. I, I, I see that there's, I there's, can't see him being second no banana way. and being a VP. There's no way. Well, you know, one thing is very important when it comes to presidents and vice presidents. You don't want a vice president that is as famous or as charismatic or as popular or yeah, more popular than exactly. the president. And I'm not saying Tucker is more popular than, than Trump, but he's a very charismatic, famous guy. Right. And you want someone, you know, Pence was like perfect before the betrayal. 
because he had no personality. That's why I was talking to someone today about Ramaswamy. One of the reasons I don't think Trump would ever really seriously consider Ramaswamy is because if Ramaswamy were vice president, all the media coverage would be about him. Right. The media love Ramaswamy. Right. So Trump doesn't want that. I don't want that. And that's not good. It makes him the second well, banana. He's not going to want anybody, not that it could happen, that's going to outshine him at all. I yeah. think that's part of the reason he chose Pence. Yeah. So the people you mentioned all have definitely better personalities than him. Pence, oh. Which is not hard to See, do. See, I think Pence's personality is just a, that of a nasty man. Well, yeah. I and, think he's, and, and I, he's, I, yeah. He's pretty much out of it. I mean, he's like, you know, nobody's talking about him or he's not even a player anymore. That's Chris Christie's biggest fear. Yeah, now it's about to come true. I want to take a moment to thank our Patreon supporters. If you're a Patreon supporter, make sure you take advantage of the perks of being a Patreon supporter. If you go to the Patreon page, you have access to commercial free editions of all the podcast episodes. And Kathy and I post things up there that we don't post anywhere else all the time. And, there, and you can also keep in better communication with us directly mm -hmm. through there and, and on the Patreon page. And if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter of the program, there's a link in the episode description as well as a direct link on my website, briancraigshow.com. Our top Patreon supporters get a live on-air thank you shout-out on each and every podcast episode. So the names you will hear now are our top Patreon supporters. I want to thank Andrew and Connie, Christine, ETW, Chuck, D, Pamela, Rick, Nick, Wesley, Macho, Mike P, Carlos, Paulette, John, Arctic Fox, Heather, David, Richard, and Maria in Texas. These are our top Patreon supporters. Thanks so much for your support. You know, usually I don't care about the vice president. I never really care about the vice president. The only reason I have any interest in it this time mm -hmm. is because Trump only has one term left. Right. You know? It's important. But I, I'm, I'm really I, – I wouldn't say I'm nervous – but things are going too well for us right now, right? Trump's ahead of everybody, including Biden. There's new, these new polls out today show uh, Biden behind Trump in battleground states even more so than the poll from the beginning of the week. You know, things, things are going too well. And these uniparty establishment people, they're not saying, okay, he's doing so well. We can't beat him and we'll just let him, you know, alone. It, it, it's not going to happen. Right. So – and when, when things are going this well, I, I get, like, nervous. Like, what are they planning? Maybe that's what Kevin McCarthy's off to leave. Well, he's something. got all those court things coming up next year. He was in court today. In the uh, Yeah, that's about to wrap up. And then he's got, what, three more? Trump's, Trump's uh, attorneys had a witness in that uh, New York fraud trial today who took the witness stand and said that Mar-a-Lago is valued at over a million dollars. President Trump is only valued it at 600 and something million. He's undervalued it. And the judge got pissed. He said, it's not about the value of Mar-a-Lago. It's about the fraudulent documents. You know, this guy, there's no jury. The judge is the jury. He's the judge and the jury. That, isn't that sounds crooked, right? Exactly. And it seems like he's already made up his mind. And anything- Of course he has, obviously. We know that. And anything that is entered as evidence that uh, yeah. might no, change his mind, getting, he shoots he's down. He's definitely not getting a fair trial at all. And, the, and this judge doesn't seem to care. No. He, he feels totally invincible. Like Bowman pulling the fire alarm. But, this, you know, this, this witness that testified that – and he went through um, the value of Mar-a-Lago over the years. And he said from the beginning, President Trump has always undervalued Mar-a-Lago. He's always been conservative in his valuation of Mar-a-Lago. And now because of everything, it's worth over $1 billion. This guy said he was an expert witness on the stand, and the judge was ticked. And where's the media? Where's the media? Well, a complete you know blackout where. on that. You know where. Complete blackout. Listen, we're going to take our last break. When we get back, there's a lot more to share. Don't go anywhere. It's the most wonderful time of the year, Christmas time, and the Christmas countdown has officially begun. Are you ready for the festivities? Find everything you're looking for at sarinstore.com. That's S-E-R-A-N, sarinstore.com. Have everything you're looking for. Christmas decorations, Christmas gifts, Christmas trees, Christmas clothes, Christmas costumes, Christmas pet clothes, Christmas baby products, and that's just the beginning. sarinstore.com will ensure that your holiday experience is truly special and unforgettable. Make this Christmas the one to remember, visit sarinstore.com and let the holiday magic begin. sarinstore.com, S-E-R-A-N, sarinstore.com, your one-stop destination for everything Christmas.
From author Barbara Alger comes a soul-stirring journey like no other with the book Imagine the Passion. Available on Amazon, Imagine the Passion takes readers on an immersive experience, guiding them hour by hour through the poignant moments of Jesus Christ's passion. From the heart-wrenching agony in the garden to the triumph of the resurrection, each hour is captured through exquisite poetry that covers the emotions and significance of that moment. Imagine the Passion invites readers to reflect, meditate, and connect with the profound story Story of redemption. It's a companion for Lent, a haven for contemplation, and a wellspring of inspiration as we walk alongside Jesus on his journey of love and sacrifice. The author's stunning full-color illustrations are crafted exclusively for this devotional and breathe life into the words and elevate the spiritual experience. Connect with the heart of the sacrifice of Jesus and order your copy of Imagine the Passion from author Barbara Alger on Amazon. This Christmas, give the gift of creativity, imagination, and endless fun with B Blocks Building Blocks, available on Amazon. B Blocks Building Blocks isn't just a fun gift, but it's educational too. It's a STEM toy of 500 pieces. That's right, 500 pieces to ignite your little one's creativity. Children will be introduced to a world of colors, shapes, and designs. They'll learn to play and create with eight vibrant colors. From enhancing fine motor skills to exploring basic geometry and architecture, B Blocks Building Blocks is fun and a powerful learning tool. And they click securely together, too. They're safe and cool. Perfect for boys and girls. And this is a gift they'll cherish for years to come. B Blocks Building Blocks are available in the B Blocks store on Amazon. Just search B Blocks. B E B L O X. B Blocks Building Blocks. Because every child deserves the best. Only in the B Blocks store on Amazon. What are your child set right now? From author Donna Silvera comes a book that you will want to add to your must-read list. This is your last warning. Available on Amazon. The end of days is not at hand. However, it seems that chastisement is. God doesn't want to punish his children, but our world has become increasingly self-centered, often mocking God. The choice to change our course lies within us. This is your last warning is based on authentic and highly reliable prophecies and sheds light on events in today's world. The warning grows louder, and time to avert it grows shorter. The time to pay attention is now. This is your last warning from author Donna Silvera is available on Amazon in Kindle, paperback, and Kindle Unlimited. Embrace the opportunity to understand, reflect, and act. Order your copy right now. This is your last warning on Amazon because our choices shape our destiny. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. I got a, uh, a text from Newsmax. You know, I, I don't know if you're on the Newsmax text list. But they text you news stories all the time, and they sent one out about the ratings. After the firing of Tucker Carlson and the network's effort to stop Donald Trump, Fox News has seen its ratings plummet. Fox News ratings fell 19% in primetime. Newsmax ratings are up 43% in primetime. Um, and, it, you know, it's a big thing about promoting them and how they're going to carry all the Trump rallies and stuff. Fox's primetime ratings have fallen only 19%. I mean, who's who? News junkies. Who's still watching Fox? People that just love the news. I don't, I don't you know? get it. And they just, they can't let it go. I, I, I don't get it. I, I watched it uh, the other night because Trump was on the town hall, which, which was good. Okay. So, you know, I, I did watch it. And I did tune in a little bit this morning because I wanted to see their analysis, if they had any, on that Republican debate last night. But I, I watched it for 10 minutes. And it, it's, it's not a fair question to ask people that are listening to this program because, you know, you're listening online, so you're not a television person. Right. But you can be in a bubble, you know, and it, it's easy to get in a bubble. Well, nobody watches TV anymore. Everybody gets everything online. Well, I get everything online, and you probably get most everything online too. But still, millions upon millions of people get their news and information off of television. Right. And television is very powerful. And to deny that, you know, is, 
is to live in a in an internet bubble. It's really sad. I mean, I, I would have thought Fox News's ratings would have collapsed by about forty or fifty percent because I don't understand. Well, maybe they did it first, and now people, people have gone are back. Kind of going back, yeah. Well, I, I'm wondering. You know, people like to watch TV. They they yeah. They like to get their news from the TV, especially older people. That's you well, know. Yeah. Well, in that article on Newsmax, they don't give a lot of information. I'm wondering if Fox News snapped back a little bit because Newsmax got taken off of DirecTV mm-hmm. and people that were watching news. You know, I haven't even watched Newsmax in a long time. I, I'll, I will watch a segment or two of Greg Kelly on YouTube every once in a while. I ju- to me, the television news is too slow. Yeah, you know, and Fox especially. They just talk about the same thing for days and days and days. Well, yeah, and the the television news, I mean, news is new, new, right? Yeah. When is the last time you turned on the news and there was something new to you there, right? Because because of social media and the internet, you you get things very, very quick. You know, when I would do show prep before the – before before there was social media and things like this, when the internet was new, after the newspaper, when I first started, we didn't have the internet. There was no internet yet when I first started doing this, okay? So I had to do newspapers and magazines. Mm-hmm. But I had to print everything up. Oh, my goodness. I spent so much money on printer ink and printer paper. Oh, my goodness. Now I just tweet everything, and all my show prep is on my Twitter feed. So if you follow me on Twitter, Brian Craig, sure you get all my show prep, all the stuff I talk about on anything I do, and all the stuff I never get to. Um, but I can do... In two hours, I, I spend probably two hours every morning. I get up, take a shower, and I spend about two hours at doing show prep before I go to work, do the show, okay? Even on the weekends, when I do my weekend live streams, I do my show prep, I'll spend two hours solid doing it. I believe I get through more news and information online in two hours than I could get through in two weeks if I got my information from television, from cable news. But it's still very, very powerful, and I, mm-hmm. I am shocked that Fox News' ratings have only dropped 19%. Now, they did do this, though. You know, Megyn Kelly was the big star moderator on that News Nation debate. They had two other ladies, yeah. um, Vargas. Oh, Elizabeth Vargas. Yeah, she's on News Nation. Yeah, they yeah. might give Megyn Kelly a job. Yeah, and they had another woman I mean, there who I've never she's heard doing of. something with them. Yeah, and on Fox, it was interesting because the reason I wanted to see what they did on Fox, and some of it had to do with Megyn Kelly. They were showing all these clips where Megyn Kelly was just humiliated, Chris Christie and Ron DeSantis, but they edited Megyn Kelly out because mm. they're, you know, so they, oh my God. so the, the two biggest movers and shakers right now in the, in the new media, the new digital media, I know people who disagree with the second, but are Tucker Carlson by far. Yeah. And then Megyn Kelly is in the top five. Yeah. You know, she's, she's big and I don't always agree with her, but, um, she's good. And she's in the top five mm-hmm. after t- like Tucker's number one, and then the five. Then there's out of the five after him, she's in that top five of influence, and they're both from Fox. And Fox, you got to wonder, are they killing themselves? Like, oh man, we got rid of these two, and now they're everyone's talking about them, and they're and they're making news, and they're doing it, and they're getting everything. They, there's got to be some frustration because th- um, while while Fox may be down nineteen percent in prime time, I bet you overall they're down more. Yeah. In their other times of of the day, you know, and um, when you're on television, you want people watching, and when you're when you're doing a show, and you feel like you don't have viewers, it it doesn't feel good. Okay, it doesn't feel good, and they got to be depressed about this, and it's got to be a threat to the 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 cable news establishment. That Tucker Carlson and Megyn Kelly, everyone's always talking about them. Always. And, you know, Tucker's got a big interview coming up with Alex Jones. Everyone's going to be talking about that. Oh, yeah. I, and I, I, I know it'll be good, but everyone's going to be – that's going to be huge. Yeah, that'll be big. That, that'll that probably be his second biggest interview. The first one, the biggest was Trump. But after Trump, I would say this would mm-hmm. be the – this would be the big one because I'm sure he'll get into, into good stuff. But – uh, people don't talk about Fox. Uh, the only time people talk about what's going on on Fox News is, now is we had Trump at that town hall the other night, which was good. Hannity did a good job on that. Or 
like we're talking about how no one's watching Fox News anymore. Yeah. It, it's they're really just psh. kind of vanilla. I think people talk yeah. about the view more. But vanilla is a good way to put <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, they're just very vanilla. Vanilla, very boring. Um, I haven't watched it in a long time. I had it on today for about ten minutes on Outnumbered, which I used to watch a lot, and um, that yeah. just to see was there anything happening, and then I turned it off. I was just very bored and. You know, but Trump, I think, changed media and and how people's uh, expectations of the media. Yeah. You know, it was more exciting with him, and now it's back to the same old stuff, and they're trying to not talk about him as much. Yeah. Not as interesting. Well, you know, I just saw another article about Trump building a loyalty first cabinet is what they're calling it. You know, we were talking about the last segment, a loyalty uh, first cabinet. I, I don't know how you do that. I think he's been stabbed in the back more than anybody in politics. Oh. Well, you know, here's here's the thing, okay? All of these people in Washington, they plan on being there for the rest of their lives. Mm-hmm. So Trump's going to be there for four more years. They're thinking about, well, what about year five and six? Right. It, you know, I, what am I going to be doing then? Trump will be retired to Mar-a-Lago, building his presidential museum and all of that. Where, where right. am I going to be then? Because he's not going to be. So it is to find a loyalty free cabinet or a loyalty free cabinet. That's what we had last time. Right. To to find a, a loyalty first. A loyalty first cabinet. Loyalty free was the last cabinet. A loyalty first cabinet. I think that's almost impossible. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I I agree. I mean, you know, there's a lot of temptations in Washington and Oh. And uh, a lot of money being being uh, yeah. thrown around, and a lot of people are easily bought. Well, like I'll give you an example, like the 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 VP list, right? We're talking, and, and on that list of possible VPs, I, the two we like the best, of course, are Christy Nome and, and say Sarah Huckabee, right? Yeah. Although I'm not as crazy about her as I am Christy Nome. The moment that they get elected vice president, all they're going to be thinking about is getting elected president next time. Well, yeah. So because, the, so. I think Christy Noem has the best shot of getting elected in 2028 well, when, over uh, the, all the other names. So what, what has to happen is, say Christy Noem's the vice president. All she's going to be concerned about is getting the nomination and being the president in 2028. So yeah. is she going to be 100% loyal to Trump behind the scenes, or is she going to be working out deals with donors and such to have their support? You know, it's how can you That's how be Washington sure works. of that? I know. I don't know. You know, I'm loyal to Trump. You're loyal to Trump. But I think when but, he's But these in, people are in another world. It's going to be a different tone because it's his last term and there's no, from the left anyway, there's no fear. of the, That's it. He's done with politics. Yeah. So I think once he's in, the tone will be different and they're going to keep saying lame duck, lame duck. You're going to hear that a lot. Um, and the tone will be different with him than it was the last time because it'll be, that's it. His last term, he's done, and then he's retiring. And and in their mind, they won't have to deal with it, that threat anymore. And so I think once that climax is over of him getting in, after a few months, it'll calm down. And I think, I don't think he'll talk about him much at all. Um, but then, you know, if if he has a good running mate that's gonna, that's doing well, that he's helped set up. Yeah, they're going to start attacking whoever that is, and they'll they'll shift their focus off of him onto that person. You know, yesterday Bannon went off on Hannity. I mean, he was fuming at Hannity over Hannity asking Trump if he was going to be a dictator. You know, and I I thought I love oh Steve. I love Steve Bannon, but I think he overreacted. Wait, uh, Hannity asked him that? Yeah, and Trump says, "Well, I'll only on the first day." I right? think they were just joking. Yeah, and Bannon just was going off on Hannity. Mm about it. And uh, I love Trump's answer. And I know a lot of people are saying, well, why did he say it? because he had everybody talking about him in the news he, and he made his way into the news cycle. Right. And, and, and Fox was even defending him on that. He's just joking. It was, they don't, the Trump haters, they're like millennials and Gen Z's. They don't get sarcasm. No, you can't be sarcastic with these people. You know, you, you, if you're if you're sarcastic, they take it literally. And oh my goodness, you said he's going to be a dictator. See, he confessed. Mm-hmm. Now, I want to do one more um, disclaimer to people. I told you guys this last week. If you are at a Trump event and someone comes up to interview you, especially if they're with the Young Turks, do not do the interview. The Young Turks have a regular thing that they put on their channel on YouTube of interviews with MAGA hat wearing Trump supporters at Trump rallies. And they had one this week where they interviewed people talking about uh, this being the end times. And 
when they mm-hmm. talking to the young Turks, they may not identify themselves. Sometimes on their mic, they'll have uh, the uh, T Y T for the young Turks. T Y T. Don't talk to these people. They edit it in a way right. to make you look foolish, and yep. they're making fun of you. It's like when Republicans would go on the Daily Show when John Stewart was doing it. You have to be out of your mind. They're gonna, they're doing it to make you look stupid, and I it, it really burns me that these MAGA people are doing interviews with these liberals and well, allowing the themselves to be made fun of is, like that. Is the people that talk about the end times are very religious, obviously. Yes, and the Bible, Jesus talks about. That if people make fun of you on, for his sake, that you're blessed. Yeah. So a lot of That's people true. like when that happens. Yeah. Because they feel that Jesus is, you know, obviously likes that. Yeah. That they're being made fun of in his name because he does directly address that in the Bible. Well, I, I don't think these people so realize that. I don't think they're going to stop that. talking about it be, because they're afraid of No, no, no I'm not telling people to stop talking about it. What I'm telling people is they shouldn't do interviews with liberal news outlets right. at Trump events. And you should only do interviews with – if you do an interview, it's, I'm not saying don't do interviews, but do interviews with people you know or conservatives. Right. Do not do interviews with liberals and do not do interviews with people that you don't know and who they are. And they'll keep interviewing, interviewing, interviewing until they get what they want. Yeah, and then they take the clips that they want right. and say, look, this is MAGA. They're crazy. Right. And once the, and it only takes one person. This happens. I mean sometimes it's happened on more than once on Right Side Broadcasting. They've they've been interviewing people live randomly that are waiting to get into a rally and they'll say something crazy, right? It's happened. Mm-hmm. Remember this happened at, at a Trump rally a couple months ago. Oh my, I'm not going to tell you what the guy said, but it was nuts. And the right side broadcasting guy didn't hear what he said and he agreed with it just to be polite. And then I remember. Oh that. my goodness, it caused it. You got to be very careful who you talk to yeah. when people come up to you. And anytime I go to a Trump event, there's a bunch of people with iPhones that are interviewing people on their iPhones. You know, I don't know who these people are, you, in, and believe me, most of them are up to no good. Right. You know, that we, we don't have a lot of friends that are in the media, okay? Well, guys, listen, we're out of time for today. We'll be back next time. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. It's the Brian Craig Show podcast. We will talk to you next time.